Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Takes from the Lakes podcast. As always, I'm joined by James, uh, my magnificent co-host. Uh, but today we have a special guest, uh, the newly uh, appointed basketball coach at Ocean Lakes High School, Coach Steve McKinley. Uh, thanks for joining the pod today, Coach. Appreciate you having me, man. Of course. Um, I guess I'll take the first question. I guess um, probably not many, like we know you, but not, I guess we don't even know much about your background. Like we know you personally, but um, you know, some people might not be sure, you know, how you um, sort of rose to this position as head coach for Ocean Lakes and what you've done um, around the basketball community. So maybe you could tell us about that to start. That'd be great. Yeah, man. um, I grew up getting playing basketball around here, man. Um, Before I started out in the rec league, Mm -hmm. um, got picked up doing AAU, man, by a guy named Steve Strasbaugh and uh, he helps coach over at Kellum mm-hmm. Kellum High School he works out with a lot of the girls boys like he was a big name coach you know back in the day like mid to late 90s and you know around that time AU was like a lot different you had mm-hmm. like one 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 city one team so mm-hmm. to, to get picked up and play you had to really know how to play play ball so played under him is uh, another guy named Coach Kelly Coach Shove at Lansdowne, came up playing underneath him. Virginia Beach Heat was actually the AAU team. So that's when I kind of got my break with it. Then um played over at Corporal Landing Middle School. Hmm. Um, no Jets. played two years over there. And um Green Run is where hmm. I played um basketball and football over there. Now, as far as with the coaching, man, it's crazy, right? My daughter, man, was playing basketball. And um I didn't even have no intentions on coaching. This had to hmm. been like 10 years ago, right? So the, the coach, for some reason, doesn't come back. So, you know, the director of the rec league is like, hey, we need a coach. I'm like, I'm not coaching, man. Like, I'm just here to support. Went ahead and did it, man. I think the girls went like six and two that year. Mm-hmm. Then I went over to AAU. I was coaching Norfolk Neptunes and Norfolk Express girls. I coached there for a couple of years. Then I was doing the boys' recreation. Then I started doing my own AAU program was called Virginia Beach Lakers, man. And um, I had ages from like 10 to 12. Then I got more familiar with it. Then it went to 14. Then it went to 16. And then I started coaching over at Independence Middle Boys a couple of years ago, coaching basketball over there. And when I tell you, man, Independence was never known for basketball. Hmm. Like, man, I think we they went like 15 years, no playoff berth. Damn. So to come in my first year, and get them from a game away from a city title. We wound up losing to Locksburg. Locksburg was pretty good, always been good. You know, was 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 dope. Came back the following year, coached them again. And um didn't really like the way things was going, man, as far as you know, you know, on the administrative side of things. And I was like, you know, it's time to take a step up, you know, to um the next level. So I'm gonna tell you, man, you can have all the AAU experience. All the middle school experience. Mm-hmm. It's hard to break into high school, man. Let me. <laughs> well, I'm so tell you spots. this right now. Like, it's hard, man. Like, I, it was just different people I was just interviewing for. Mm-hmm. So, October last year, I get a voicemail. I don't pick up the phone. It's Coach Mullen. And I was kind of familiar with him because I coached in Nike camp. So, I would uh, kind of see him. So, I knew okay. who he was. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I get a, Nash, I get you were there helping out, right? And I can't. I was yeah. there helping yeah. out. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I remember Both of you guys. Nash. I remember mm-hmm. Nash, Chase. So once I got to Ocean Lakes, their faces started to look familiar. Mm-hmm. So long story short, he reaches out to me. And he's like, hey, man, um, I, I, I've heard good things about you. You know, I want you to come out, you know, to the team. Let me know what you, how you feel, how you like it. And um, I remember, man, like, it was one practice. So I'm like, man, I'm just an assistant, man. I'm not really going to say much. Mullen pulls me to the side. He said, hey, man, I ain't bring you on board for you just to be quiet. You got to have some input. And from that point on, it was on and popping, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I just took to it, man. And um, it's funny y'all do this podcast because it's, it's two of y'all. Mm-hmm. James, you're one of the toughest kids, man, <laughs> I've seen play the game. Thank and you. I'm going to tell you, man, I was a bruiser in football and <laughs> basketball. So my, I'm a competitive coach, you know, and that's my mentality. So once I saw you, I'm like, yo, who is this kid? Man? <laughs> like this kid is, is, is tough. And then Nash was just like the brains of it. Mm-hmm. And I loved his leadership. 
And he never complained. Even when he would get subbed out of games, I never saw him complain. So I, I, I sat back and I took notes with stuff like that. And I said, huh, okay, man, I, I like what's going on over here, man. And, you know, I want to stay on board, man. I just saw a lot of potential over there. And I'm going to be honest, you know, Green Run was an opportunity. Salem was an opportunity. Then when this came about, of course, those positions wasn't as big as this one. I said, hey, man, I can't shy away from this opportunity, man. And this where I'm at, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you uh, compare James and I's very different game. Uh, <laughs> Definitely uh, think, got different skill sets yeah. in uh, specific right. areas. But right, well, right. I just I just remember Nash <clears throat> always saying like before the game, like, hey, I'm taking a charge today. I don't think he. I don't think he took a single. Tr- uh, have you taken I tried, a charge? I tried. I tried one time against Kellum, and then he euroed out of the way. And I think oh, I was wow. right there. I was like, I think I said yeah, like, yeah, no, during um, the play, I was like, bro, what are you? You were, you were right. You were right there yelling at me to take the charge. <laughs> no, I was like, I was um, like, but I mean, I charge. think, I think, I mean, this team would be super successful if everybody on the team had as good a chemistry as James and I had. Yeah, um, man. And so I, that was one of the first thing I I actually noticed was was that, mm-hmm. and. You know, it was times that, you know, it was kind of unfair to Coach Mullen far as the personnel and times he was so limited on mm-hmm. what he had, man. So I'm like, yeah. man, but y'all were just two that always stood out to me. Mm-hmm. And Leak, Leak, I coached him, man, in AAU. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I noticed you guys like seemed like you already knew each other. Right, um, right. Yeah. So once I had got over there, he like, coach, you know, it was nice to like, yeah. Because I think he had a situation. I think he was at Kentsville or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he didn't even know. Romel. I was coaching Romel since he was seventh grade. Wow. And <laughs> he was like, he really didn't want to go out for the team. So I literally had a talk with both of them. So I was like, yo, man, the irony over here is crazy. Mm-hmm. So I kind of already knew them from just coaching them just coming up, man. Two great kids, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um. I mean, like you mentioned Coach Mullen, you know, a few times, I guess, like just being like not in a shadow, but just like working with him like last year, like what things, um, because obviously, like you said, you didn't coach at the high school level. What things have you learned that you're going to like implement this year? Like what sort of mindset are you going to like apply to um, coaching the team this year from him? One thing about him, man, you know, we talked a lot at the basketball games Mm -hmm. and he was very passionate, man, about the game. Yeah. There. And you get some coaches in that situation that's coming from a background of basketball like Mullen. Mullen, a legend. We, we, we ain't going to just say this because it's Ocean Lake. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't do the history. I mean, basketball is like his, life. His whole yeah. life. So mm-hmm. you got some people on that platform might have been like, man, I ain't doing this now. I'm going to Maury or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to go to a powerhouse. I never not one time heard him say he was going to quit, man. Mm-hmm. Not one time. Not one time. And as tough as it was on him, he continued, man, to to take his job serious. So to answer your question, man, it was the dedication. Mm -hmm. It was the way he communicated with y'all. Regardless of how tough he was, man, he didn't give up. He didn't. And he was very basketball-minded when it came to things. And one thing, being a head coach, you don't get it done by yourself. And when I tell you the input, he allowed me, Coach Aaron, Coach Ski. He never told nobody out, man. Like, he always wanted feedback on what's going on. And that's how you build a program, man. You, you have to have coaches on board that are knowledgeable of the game and that are dedicated and a coach that's going to let them voice their opinion. So those just a couple of things I just took from him, man, like, Hey, he 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 enjoys the feedback. You know, he wants to hear what your input is on things. Yeah, that yeah. was I remember I forget who it was. It might have been some assist. It might have been Aaron Oster. Maybe it was Ski. It was like like you would think like a guy like Mullen, like obviously like D1, I'm yeah. super like two time player of the year or whatever. Yeah. Um, like he would just be like, Oh no, right. like this is my own program. Like I got this, but he you know, he always asked for input from other guys. Always. And like no matter like who he was, like he that was the type of person he was. Um he definitely was. But yep. yeah, Nash, you have a question. Uh, yeah, I, I was just gonna say, uh, you know, I felt like a lot of the stuff that uh has contributed to Ocean Lakes's lack of wins in the last few years is just like, you know, a series of unfortunate events. You know, players like 
you a know, lot. getting in trouble, a uh, lot. you know, transferring, just a lack of uh, a lack of Commitment. buy-in. And it really what? like has nothing to just like group of guys that didn't mesh well, or, you know, one year we got decimated by COVID. Um, yeah. And so it just like, it just seemed like we always had the pieces and it just never seemed to fall into place. And I think that's part of what was so frustrating for everybody like around the program, including coach Mullen, like it right. just never seemed to fall into place. Right. Um, and I think like that's the biggest thing. Of course, y'all had like. some dogs that they came through there, man. I remember that COVID mm-hmm. year, y'all had a guy over there, Braden Thorne, man. Um, yep. He was yeah. a guard. Yep, he was my year, yeah. Yep. Man, listen. So it was some pieces, but again, it, it's just, it was uh, one of those short in the sticks, man. And, you know, we got to be honest, too. And this is a challenge for me as a coach. We in a generation now, man, that players don't really want to build anymore. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to go to something what I call already bought. Run so the it's a lot of transferring going on. Mm-hmm. So it's really a challenge to get kids to want to play and be at a program that they feel, hey, it's, maybe it's not a land sound or maybe it's not a green run. And much respect to those programs. Coach Robin and Coach Harris, shout out to those guys, man. Great coaches. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 a process, man. It's it, it really is. It's a process to get people – to you know, to want to buy into a system, man, and really want to build. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I would just ask, like, because obviously Lansdown is known as like the team that obviously works really hard, super fundamental team. Like their teams like Green Run, more like flashy type of deal. What would you want, right. like Ocean Lakes, like as far as the type of team goes? Like, how do you want us, well, you guys, I guess now, um, to be known as like sort of just like a grit and grind type of deal, just like um, force w- or like grind wins across and like that or something else. Fundamentals, man. I'm yeah. big on fundamentals. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm a firm believer, man. And you don't have to have all the five star kids to be successful, mm-hmm. but you got to have kids that want to win and you got to have kids that want to buy into the system. You would never get away from fundamental basketball ever. And we can look at some of these guards now and Gary Payton. I know he's a little bit before y'all time. Oh, a lot of people talk about John Stockton. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, they say that dude was one of the hardest players to guard. And this is what I tell you, man. It's about doing the little things right. And I'm a defensive-minded coach, man. So my players, man, you know, they they have to buy into that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a competitive guy because I feel like if you have defense, you're going to win. You know, you could have a guy that is being recruited by everybody. And you could have a kid that's just very athletic and strong. He's going to make life very difficult for you. And he could be a football player. You know, and it's like, yo, this kid was playing defense. So the mindset would have to be first fundamentals. I don't care what level of basketball you at. You got to learn to do the little things right. Because mm-hmm. that's going to win you a game. It's going You can be up by 20 points and blow a game because you're out there missing free throws. You're not playing team basketball. So even coaching, man, those younger kids, I always paid attention to detail. And mm-hmm. That's what made me where I'm at now, and I'm still learning. So many parents or coaches will come and be like, yo, how are they getting this done? Because they're buying into the system. And you got to know how to scout players, man. Everybody ain't going to have Kyrie Irving handles. Hmm. Everybody ain't going to give Except you 20, Nash. 25 a game. But you got to pay attention to how hard they work and are they coachable kids. And when yeah. you put all that together, man, you got a recipe for success. Mm-hmm. And I think when you watch like college mm-hmm. basketball, it's even more apparent, like some of these guys who are five stars, four stars, highly right. recruited, like you see them playing in a system where it's, you know, dribble handoffs, one dribble <laughs> pass, you yeah. know, posting up. You got to, man. Feet, so, I mean, look at Kentucky, man, when, you know, when Kyler Perry was there, I'm a big yeah. fan of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They transitioned to the NBA. <clears throat> They wasn't getting it done in college. And look at the big players they had. Because yeah. when it came down to those big moments, you got those Villanovas, UVAs, Carolinas. Hey, we just going to move use. this ball around. And we're going to make you want to play. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's what it come down to, man. You got to know how to play for four quarters. That's that's it, man. And I've had a range of talent. I've had a range of great kids. I've had mediocre kids. 
but I know how to put everything together, man, and, and be successful with it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you mentioned Calipari. Uh, are there any other like college NBA coaches that you sort of look to for tactics or mm -hmm. maybe just like the way that they're developing players? I'm going to tell you, this guy I'm about to name here is not being on a basketball platform, but I love his approach to the game. It's Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you why. Pass fan here. Let's go. I'm gonna tell you. Oh, that's for squad. I'm a, I'm a Saints yeah. fan, but oh, okay. I'm gonna tell you. Tell you at, why, at least you respect him. He don't put nobody above the team. Tom Brady is the goat. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, number twelve did this today. Number twelve did that today, and that guy preparation to the game was just very big for me. And I always took notes out his book when he would just tell his players to do your job. I don't think people understand how hard it is to win that many two woes. Like, this ain't basketball. Basketball, you can look and be like, okay, the Warriors going to win. When they had they reign. Or football, man, that's, it's very unpredictable, man. Like, that, that's hard to do it. Now, on the basketball side of things, as a coach that I, I, I really, really took notes of, man, um, I got I got to go with Phil Jackson, man. How mm. can I not? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, how can we're I talking not, championships, I mean, and yeah, it makes sense. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it, I'm gonna tell you, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't just um, him having Jordan because people got to understand he didn't win to Jordan, he didn't win to Phil got there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the Lakers, which is my mob, that's my squad. Through that period of time, we didn't win till he got there, so it was the way the players respected him. Mm -hmm. You know, and to get that done, man, two dynasties on two different teams. I mean, I got to take my hat off to him, man. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing, because I was, like I said, diehard Pats fan. My favorite thing with Bill Belichick, um, obviously, like he has to do your job, like, you know, play your role <laughs> and then you're going to win games. But I remember in 20, I think it was Nashville now, because it was the Chiefs week one destroyed the Pats. It was like 41, 14. Alex 100. Smith. Yeah, Dream hunt went crazy. Yep. I want to say it was 2016, yeah. 17. Um, and then like got destroyed, and everyone was like, Hey, like the dynasty is over, Brady's washed, blah blah blah. And then the press conference, the only thing Bill Bel Belichick said was, We're on to Cincinnati. Like, that's who they were playing next week. Like, we're that's on it. to Cincinnati. It's like it's on to the next one. And they went on yeah. to win the Super Bowl and win yeah, and I mean, two more like, after that. So right. it's not like we're gonna lose games this year. Of course. Like, it's unavoidable. We, like I think that's the other thing, like getting and, and we, we're we're like, kind of behind the curve on things, but yeah, we can't we're not gonna use that as an excuse, but mm -hmm. we gotta you gotta crawl before you walk, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I want to ask, like, I mean, we're on the topics of coaches. Um, obviously, like last year, like I guess in terms of like rankings of like coaching, like hierarchy, like you were in the same position as Coach Ski, um, and Coach Aaron, uh, both assistant coaches. I guess Ski, like uh, JV, right. is Ski coaching JV again this year. Is he yeah. okay? Yes. Yeah, but like also a varsity assistant. Same with Aaron. Like, how is your relationship with them going to be like the same or different as it was um last year? Well, I mean that's a good question, man. I, and you know when I first got the information and I chose to release it to the world, it was an abundance of coaches mm -hmm. that was reaching out, and you know a lot of people want that opportunity. And I'm not saying they can't get that opportunity, but coaching AAU in school is completely two different things. For one, it's a lot more dedication with school. It's a whole lot more. You mm -hmm. talking six days a week. And yeah. it's the mindset of being, you, you, you're not able to really let loose on the AAU level far as with school. So in this process, man, you have to be mindful of, okay, who can I bring in? Who's going to be dedicated, you know, and who is going to buy in to the system? Coach Aaron, man, is is very knowledgeable of the game. And, you know, I really took to him, man, because we're both competitive. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, we fire. know. We're both fire. Lakers fans. Yeah. yeah, that's my squad. That's my We, we played Aaron too many times at the rec to know that he's right. competitive. So, yeah. I, I kind of noticed that, man, at being in the locker room. And I was like, yo, what's this dude, man? You know, so I really, my mind was already made up that um he was going to be on my staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Ski, we have different coaching styles, you know, and that doesn't make mine's better or his better. But 
we have different styles, but I feel like on the professional level of things, you know, he's he's always prepared. I would yeah. say, yeah, he, he's very organized. You know, and very he keeps very the JV guys disciplined. Yeah. Right. Oh he's yeah. Very. He's very organized, and um, even with him, man, even as coming in as assistant, it was never. Oh yo, this is this is who's starting today. Like, he would still call me, man, or come to me, like, hey, man, what do you think about? Boom, 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 starting, boom, boom, boom. And whatever my opinion was about it, it was cool. So yeah. it, it was it was a big respect level, you know, when it when it comes to my staying on the game and me being able, you know, to to voice my opinion. And again, just because I'm more of a fiery coach, he may be more on the laid back side. That doesn't mean who's better, who's there. I mean, coaching styles are different, man. So, mm -hmm. you know. Being able to get everything to mesh together is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be um, maybe a challenge. And mm -hmm. Coach Hess, so y'all know, I met him for the first time this year. Mm -hmm. He's going to be on board, man. And um, I really like his knowledge of the game. I, I do, man. Um, he, he has a straightforward standpoint on basketball, sports in general. Mm -hmm. And just how he feels. And again, I, I saw that that tenacity in him. I saw that that competitive side. And you gotta have those things, man, when you're building a program. And will this be the set staff for the next? I don't know, you know, but yeah. I only can focus on what we have going on right now and seeing how things turn out. Yeah. Um, I also think like Coach Ski. Like as far as like coaching JV, like you want like guys to be like fundamental, <clears throat> fundamental, like grit and grind guys. I think that's like he's doing like a really good job with that too. Like just yeah. watching the JV games last year, like there are a couple guys that like really like do the little things and like you can see that and like he's like enforcing that. Um, I mean taking charge is like that was like my thing and I there's like multiple people yeah. taking honestly more people taking charge on JV last year than there hey, was on varsity. Started, hey, that all came from you though, man. <laughs> hey, I, I'll I, take I, it, I, but I, I, um, I guess if you're talking quantity you, of man. charges, then maybe I got it, but. Um, yeah, but that, I think that's, um, a good thing as far as like developing young guys too. Right. Right. Um, not just on varsity, but yeah. <clears throat> you got anything, Nash? You got a question? Nash? Um, I mean, nothing more on the, uh, coaching side of things, but I guess any last know, comments that you want to say? Yeah. I mean, want. if you want to talk about your saints, or your Lakers at all, uh, give us some, some NBA or NFL. Yeah, now's your chance. The floor is yours. Now's your opportunity. Oh man. Oh, the Lakers. Oh, okay. Let me start there, man. I feel like LeBron is at a point where I don't think it's really focused on the championship side of things. Mm -hmm. He caught a lot of slack with everything. I mean, people are going to have their opinion, but to be in a position to get your son, hmm. I don't think people understand how hard that is. I don't think people understand how legendary that is. Yeah, to, yeah. to be in a position to even get your kid on a team. Man, this ain't no pickup basketball, man. This is the league. This is the league, man. Like, yeah. you know, so my opinion on his son, um, I personally think if he would have stayed three, four years, eventually he was going to get drafted. But, you know, he's here now. Um, Kobe is my GOAT, man. You know, Just like that's, my, that's my favorite player, man. And I'm going to tell you, again, that comes to my coaching style. It's how competitive he is. And I would literally just sit up and just take notes on this dude, man. You could go to any NBA player and let them talk, even when it was in Olympics. They out party, have a good day. They're like, yo, Kobe in the gym four in the morning. You know, Carbello said, him and AI, they're like, yo, we leaving the club, wherever we at. We, we getting ready to go to practice. Kobe had already been in the gym for two, three hours. And people, for you to even be compared to Jordan, do you understand how good you have to be? So that's yeah. that's 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 my goat there. Best ball handler all times, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, hands down. Nobody can handle a rock like him, man. Like, I mean, his 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 skill set. He might be Kyrie might be one of the most skilled, if most skilled players in the league. I mean, yeah. he does mid range three point defense, ball handling, shooting. Pivot here, turn this way. Well, whatever you ask him to do, he can do it. You know, mm -hmm. and the state of the NBA right now, 
I would like to see more defense with it. Yeah, I, don't I, know I if can't going... agree on that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just looking like, yo, every game is over 100 some points. I'm like, yo, somebody got to lock up and, 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 and play defense at some point. You know, so that's where I'm at with that. My favorite player right now is Kyrie, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant. You know, I'm a ride with the Lakers, man. That's yeah. gonna be my mob. Who can I see winning it this year? It's only one Sixers. answer. Go Sixers. It's not the Sixers. You know what the answer it's is. The coach. Sixers. <laughs> man, honest. Man, Denver gonna be hard to knock off again, man. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Denver? It they're gonna be hard, man. Man, let me tell you something. All right. Jokic is a baller, man. And he may not look like he ain't got <laughs> he definitely all the doesn't. muscles. That team is, if I could go with my picks for us to, to chip up this year. Oh, and I'm not a Boston fan being a Lakers fan. Oh, I can't stand Boston, man. You gotta have respect still. So but you have respect they, they, for Belichick. They, they, they so. talented, man. They 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 got a they got a squad, man. And Nash, you a Philly fan? I, I see the MB. Yeah, oh yeah. Day. Oh yeah. Too big of a Philly fan. I'm gonna tell you, man, if MB can stay healthy. Yeah. It, I mean, that's, I mean, and PG too. Already isn't right. healthy. Got hurt already. Yeah. Hyperextended his knee. Um, oh, already? Yeah. yeah PG. Nice. Yeah. He left one of their preseason games. Um, wow. And Something Embiid, about the Sixers. Embiid was quoted as saying he's probably never going to play back to backs for the rest of his career. I saw that. I feel like he's just like, I can't take anything he says seriously. Now, he's to just, be fair, he's like, troll. It, is, it is hard to say, like, and that's I mean, he's, set, he's seven foot, mm. like you said. Yeah, a lot a, of weight. That's a big, that's a big man, yeah. yo. And yeah. as you get older, injuries don't go away. Yeah. So, Especially yeah, he's got a big history of him. So yeah, that 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 ain't how it works, man. So mm. it's gonna be it's gonna be competitive, man. You know, Steph gonna do Steph things. Steph's the best shooter ever, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so I like I like the state of the game. I like to see more defense with it, but it's gonna be interesting this year to see the way things roll. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I always feel like Jokic is a good point. Like nobody has a bag of tricks like Jokic. He's no. the only player who I think is like truly, truly unguardable. Mm -hmm. he's, he's unguardable. It's, it's insane. Yeah, I say look, I like when Giannis though is on. Like, I mean, like you don't want to face Giannis in the dog. playoffs. Yeah, and you I don't ain't gonna cancel him. him out. He's been a little quiet, man. Mm -hmm. Caught a couple injuries, but you got to look, man. You got a dude seven foot. And he's sitting down guarding guards, man. He's yeah. guarding the perimeter. Mm -hmm. You know, so when people get to comparing these generations of basketball, and even though I'm from that era, yeah, it might have been more physical. But if you want to go far as hybrids, man, this is a different generation of talent. I mean, you got seven footers bringing the ball up the court, shooting from the perimeter, ball handling, getting to the cup, like, you you never seen that before, you know. You mm -hmm. don't. I like the young kid Anthony Edwards too. Yeah, I like him, and I'm gonna tell you what I like him much about him. He's confident. He's very confident. Oh, yeah. That's an understatement. Very, and you and you yeah. gotta, but you gotta have that mindset. You gotta mm -hmm. know that you're a dog. Like yeah. you have to come into a game knowing, yo, I'm that guy. You gotta prove me wrong. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's yeah. the mindset you gotta have. Even at mm -hmm. the high school level, like if you don't step on the court thinking that you're like the best player on the floor, like it's already a, an off yeah. night for you. I think confidence like, um, is like half, like in high school, like confidence is half the battle. Like if you can just yeah. like actually like chill out, like relax and like play your game, then it goes right. so far. So but, let me ask y'all. I'm gonna start with you, James. Who is one right. of the most talented high school kids that you played against? Um, Donald Hand, uh, sophomore year Good at one. BC. Or he's a BC now. For he was a Lansdowne then. It was their senior night. I, right. I played like I played like like two minutes of the game, but it was right. their senior night. I don't. I swear he went like twelve for twelve. Like it was <laughs> insane, and he wasn't even like trying. It was just like an easy like thirty, like twelve for twelve. But like right. it's insane. Like D one guys like in high school, especially like against us then. Like D one guys in high school basketball, like there's just above everyone else. It's it's insane. Yeah, um, he was but different. He 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 really was. Um. As far as like that's like immediately what comes to mind. Um, other than that, I feel like we didn't like play anybody super like insane. Like we played Kareem Stag, who's at um IMG yeah, now. I played I played he's AAU. Back at, I think he's back. Right, he's back, yeah. yeah. Is he uh yeah, he's back? Did he, nah. he, he committed, committed to Georgia? Georgia. Yeah, uh, he committed to Georgia. I played I played 
like in, uh, like in the same AAU program as him, like up until ninth grade. And right. then like it was like over the span of like maybe a year where he turned from like a tall kid who was like pretty good into like a beast. Yeah. And that was pretty it was a pretty insane like yeah. Um I remember we played against Fats uh at Norview. Oh man. Um, he got some and Paul he just, George type of game. Yeah, he really does. Yeah, he just his game he is just so struck smooth, me man. with his yeah, his his confidence and his like ability to play at his own pace. Yeah, yeah. you said he, 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 he has such a smooth game, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. very very talented. I mean, man. you're talking about very a smooth game, I like pass too, green run. Like he yeah. PG for green oh, yeah. run. He's 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 honestly with one of the top guys. Um, yeah, he yeah, traveling but... cast. He he works hard too, man. Oh yeah, like, he he really he really puts in the work, man. You know that's that's a good kid. His younger brother is, is up and coming. Really? And it, yeah, he has a younger brother over at Plaza <sighs> Middle right now, man. Oh, he did a green run next year, and he can go. He mm-hmm. can go, man. So you know it runs in the fam, man. Um, I think for me, far as being a spectator and a coach, I'm gonna try to stay current. Within the last couple mm-hmm. of years, who could I say probably most talented that I've seen? Mm. I'm gonna go Jaden Epps. Um, he was mm-hmm. at, where was he at? He was at um, Illinois, but he transferred to Georgetown. He okay. played at Kingsport. Oh, oh um, Kingsport. He okay. played at, he yeah, played yeah. at Kingsport. Mm-hmm. And. I'm gonna have to go Styles, man. Clemens. Yeah, man. I was. Yeah, when I'm he's, about to go Styles, yeah. and when I tell you, I've been coaching against this kid since he was like fifth grade. I don't think people understand how hard he works. Yeah, yeah, and no. I mean, it's the five a.m. workouts, and yeah, if you go to PA and you're playing, like you, you're armed. he he's in the gym, man, six days a week. He works hard, and then he's a coachable kid. I never see him sweat. Never seen him get a tech. He works. It's his work ethic, man. It's mm-hmm. his work ethic, man. And um, he's gonna do big things, man. He is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just like looking forward to see like where everyone goes. Like guys that like are MVB, and I guess just like seven five seven now that like we played against. Um, or like I mean, like most Nash. athletic guy I've played against is Zay at Lansdowne. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Ask Ask Finn man, Copen. I've seen him on a football field. Everybody <laughs> tells me like, "Yo, you ain't seen him play football." I said, "I." They speak highly of him, man. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Just, he was very athletic. First Ask play Finn of the season first, two yeah. years ago. Dunked Nash's all over sophomore, Finn my junior. He dunked dunked on our I got our big, but yeah, yeah. There's there's a video of that somewhere on the internet. That but, kid been dunking since eighth grade, man. <laughs> yeah, that was his freshman year. First play of high school, he dunked on a kid. Insane. Um yeah. pretty nuts. But yeah. That's all uh I got. Uh coach, if you want to add anything else or Nash, you too. But yeah, I that's about all I've got. Um yeah. We really appreciate you coming on, though, Coach. Uh, hey, it's been man. good to have have another guest on the pod. Definitely, yeah. I didn't even know y'all had this going on, man. Hey. And I think that I think that's dope, man. That you know y'all are, um, you know, like utilizing y'all down downtime and something, man, that can you know be be another um option for y'all to do. You just don't know, man. Everybody mm-hmm. starts somewhere with something. Yeah, you know, and I don't. It doesn't matter where you at in life, mm-hmm. man, and. We are in a generation, it's it's social media. So mm-hmm. to take advantage of this platform and to take y'all time, man, to even reach out to me as a coach, allow me to speak, man, or whoever else y'all interview, continue doing y'all thing, man. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to leave on this note with y'all, man. Always bet on yourself, okay? It don't matter sure. what you do in life. Everybody is not going to clap for you, man. And honestly, sometimes they don't have a reason to. It's just because yeah. it's you. Oh, is you is you doing something that they can't do or they want to do? So mm-hmm. always remain positive, man. Stack good days together. You're going to have bad days. It's inevitable. There's nothing you can do about that. That's the world. But continue to be optimistic, man. And whatever you want to do in life, you know, pursue your dreams, man. You know, yeah. and turn it to reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure with that mindset, uh, Ocean Lakes basketball will be just all right. And I'm sure Coach Mullen will be very proud. So. Oh yes, indeed, man. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. R.P. to Mullen, man, and mm-hmm. you know we gon' we we gonna do it for him every year, yep. man. You know mm-hmm. we gonna make him proud. Yeah, for sure, for sure. sure. But all right, right well, really yep, again, you, coach, uh, yeah. we'll all let right, you man. go. Y'all yeah. take it easy, but, man. All right, peace see out. See you have workouts in a couple days. <laughs> all right, Nash. All right, James. Y'all be good. All right, peace out. See you. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That was a good time. That was good.
That that was actually like that was really good. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got we're at like like thirty five ish minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We start like eight twenty. Um. <laughs> so if you want to do if you we can skip obscure stat if you want. Oh, yeah. Um. But we definitely have some news to talk about. Yeah. A couple of trades. A couple of trades. And yeah. then maybe some college basketball. The AP poll just came out. Mm. Uh, we can discuss that as well. Um, yeah. Um. Gosh. I guess per chance we should start with uh. Little NFL talk. Yeah, some stuff happened today, um, to say yeah. the least. Um, Devontae Adams traded to the New York Jets. Um, probably the top trade destination, I guess, or like most expected, just because obviously Aaron Rodgers. Um, him being on the Pat McAfee show, like with Aaron Rodgers, is hilarious. Do you yeah. see that? It's so funny. Yeah. Like he's just like the day he gets traded, he's with Aaron Rodgers. Um, but yeah, that's so I mean, he probably like knew since yesterday. But um, yeah, that trade happened. The Mark Cooper to the Bills. Um, I guess that Makers, trade I think is Vikings. far more impactful than anything that the Jets did. You think the Bills getting a weapon finally? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And Mark Cooper's still like good. Like he's still like, a good receiver. Obviously, the Adams to Rogers connection is real. Um, I don't think. I wonder if they'll extend him, because then like Garrett Wilson becomes. Yeah, like, I know he's already angry, but like he has a little bit to hang on to with the fact that like there's a good chance they don't extend him. Yeah. This was Devontae's third year in Vegas. So, so yeah. he's one yes. more year on his deal, or probably after this. Yeah. That's uh, a good question, a though. Four year? Yeah, that would make uh, sense. Devontae. I feel like usually, like, Adams. big wide receiver con- – or just big contracts in general, four years. Four um, years. But, yeah, uh, I mean – No, he signed a five-year contract five. with Vegas. Hmm. Okay. There's, a, there's an article. Okay, so they can probably wait a little. They, they'll probably just pay Garrett Wilson after this year. Um, cause it's yeah, it's his third year. Um, pick up his option, but um, yeah, I mean the Jets, they're two and four, kind of desperate times. Bills are four and two. Um, but it, I mean, like it's basically maybe he's them. been playing for the Jets longer than we realized. Garrett they Wilson? say it's running out. No, uh, you mean the Raiders Ad, or Adams? The Raiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was his third year, wasn't it? Um. He no, yeah, he is on the books for the 2025 and 2026 season. Okay, so yeah, they'll probably just pay Garrett Wilson and just figure it out later. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, Pats obviously suck. Um, Dolphins suck. So I mean, it's pretty much between Bills or Jets as far as the AFC East race goes. So I guess they're putting all their chips, um, in, and we'll see how it goes. But that was a rough game the other day for them. Although it was kind of yeah. sick. There was at the Hail Mary. I didn't watch. I didn't catch most of it, but I saw. Yeah. The important parts, if you will. I didn't catch um, any of it. I was submitting my first uh, college apps. That's but, not that important, um, but, you know, kind of disappointed in you. But um, clearly somebody has the wrong priorities. But yeah, just kidding. Everyone, everyone can congratulate Nash for applying to college. But yeah, KU, uh, Georgia, Texas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With um, s- several more to come. Nice. Yeah. We only care about yeah, one, hopefully. though. That's right. It's on to Northwestern. <laughs> Yep, it on is on the Northwestern. <laughs> um, um, but but yeah, um, I think everybody talking like obviously the trade has fantasy implications for Garrett Wilson, um, but like the idea that these receivers are like super upset with playing in a room with another great guy, like Garrett Wilson's been getting double teamed all year. He's been forced to run short, like five yard outs and hitches all all year, and like. They really have not opened up the field for him at all yet this season. And so as much as like I would understand him being a little bit angry, I think we're going to see some success in that like now they can really run the play action and like get yeah. Garrett Wilson out in space. Uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers' arm isn't what it used to be, mm-hmm. but, you know, really still zip get, it in there. Yeah, get Wilson the ball where we know he is most talented, yeah. which is down the field. Um, and then we'll see like if we're assessing this season the same as we were last week about Garrett Wilson. I mean, I think he's really gonna turn it around, at yeah. least in terms of like efficiency, maybe not. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, I feel like I wouldn't be mad if I was Garrett Wilson. Like you you get to be opposite of one of the best receivers in the game and like that completely opens up the offense. And I, I don't think it's like, I think he'll be like, um, what's the word Perf- like performing like as just as well as he has been the past couple weeks. Like, I mean, he got 23 targets and um against Minnesota, which, which was insane. 
10 targets last week, uh, touchdowns in three of the last four. But, like, I yeah. think I'd be happy if I was him. If yeah. I get to play with Devontae. Um, and so. Brees Hall is, I mean, ecstatic. Yeah. Um, yeah, really. He's been pretty good. Um, but I think with the Jets, like, not winning games uh, and their defense being pretty solid, like, it just it falls on all those skill position guys. Yeah. Um, and before we dive into the uh, – the Cooper trade. What do you think of the Raiders? Um, where do you think Max Crosby is going to end up? I think um, he's going to stay. I don't know. I don't. I think he like genuinely likes playing for the Raiders. And I they mean, just... he's, he's the most Raiders guy. Yeah, like, for sure. I could think like of. And he's the, he's like the Antonio Pier- Antonio Pierce player. Um, yeah. I think I think they'll keep on him. I don't think they would trade him. Um, obviously, like they're gonna draft a QB this year. We'll see where everyone's stock ends up. But like right now, they. They they get like the ninth pick or something like that. Um, like there's a lot of really bad teams. I mean Tennessee, Cleveland, Pats, Jacksonville, um, Carolina, yeah. Rams are one and four. That's kind of insane, but um, they're a good one and I don't. Yeah, know, they like, really are. They're a good one and four. I think um, Arizona's not that bad too. Like I feel like they're decent for two and four. Yeah, but, I will say like maybe we're that's the West, the NFC West, right? Uh, with Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe we're overrating that division a little bit just because they yeah. have been so good for so many years. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like the like the North, you look at it, Minnesota's five and zero, Detroit's four and one, Chicago and Green Bay are four and two. Like obviously, Chicago will probably fall off, but I don't know. Caleb's starting to get into a groove right now. Four T- TD passes um, in London on Sunday morning. Um, Obviously, Darnold's still doing his thing. Detroit just destroyed the Cowboys. Maybe the Cowboys are frauds, but I think Detroit's just really good. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, we'll see. Um, unfortunately, Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah, sucks. Yeah, really sucks. I mean, really gruesome too. Mm-hmm. The one non-bright spot out of that Cowboys Lions game. Um, but and hey, Drake May made his debut this past week. Um, I was very happy with that. Honestly, he played yeah, like was... he had a couple really bad. Like his first pick was so bad. Like it, he just overthrew the crap out of. I think it was Pop Douglas, but like he was really good. Um, yeah. like his pocket presence he was good. He, he looked comfortable. He looked comfortable. Like, oh, but he, he was comfortable. He was crapping his pants the first court. He was crapping his pants the whole first half until he threw like a money ball to booty, which got him going. But, yeah, like, but I mean, like, bro, I'm pretty sure the it's second booty. half, it's booty. I, I've. I don't know how many times. I feel like we. Dude, no, you just want to say booty, bro. All right, no, you're right. You just want to say booty really bad. You're right. You're right. Um, you are correct, but no, I'm super happy. I mean, and he gets to play Jacksonville this weekend. Oh, but yeah, I don't know. He uh he played really well, and it was nice seeing Pat's quarterback that has an arm. I mean, it's been quite a while, so yeah. Um. No, I mean, like, I think his game is very uh reliant on like he's. He's sort of a, I don't know. What I, would you compare him to Justin Herbert? Do you think that's accurate? Uh, that's like he's athletic. Say. He's yeah. athletic, but he's not like a running QB, right? But he definitely yeah. like him being able to make the right decision in terms of like moving around the pocket and leaving the pocket, yeah. um, is like really crucial. And I didn't see that initially. Yeah, but he as he sort of started to settle in, like mm-hmm. he's like he started to realize, like okay, like this is what I can expect from my O line. Yeah, like it's like interesting um, though, like he'll drop back and then he'll see a hole and he'll just like immediately go for it, which yeah. is like like he'll tuck the ball in the pocket and start running. So I'd say uh, he's probably gonna stray away from that, like as he gets more experience. But like he's definitely more run happy happy than Herbert. But like as far as passing goes, it's pretty. Um, yeah. Well, similar. and and people forget how much Herbert ran like yeah. his rookie season. Yeah, he's cut it back. Um, but yeah yeah for okay sure. rookie qbs like caleb williams has been lighting it up the last few weeks really it's it's sick J- but, i mean jaden daniels but jaden daniels and now none of his stats are like insane but you watch the game and you're like you but know. you yeah he just has it and like that ravens game like they were there yes they lost but that's a team that without a, like last year they get smoked mm. smoked and it's the same team except you add jaden daniels yeah the throw to Terry McLaurin, like in the back of the end zone, was sick, so sick. Like you watch, like the the um all twenty two yeah. camera float, angle, yeah. Like he missed him over the middle initially, and he was like, "Oh shoot!" And he just dropped it right over the linebacker. Super sick. Um, yeah. but 
Yeah. Um, and then I guess Bo Nix is the uh the odd one out, if you will. But even then, he had played well like last yeah, week. Yeah, none of them seem like terrible. Yeah. JJ McCarthy might end up being the odd one out, unfortunately. Who knows what team um, he's gonna like dude? I can you imagine if Darnold like goes 13 and 4 and like wins a playoff game or two for them? It'd be crazy. But the world is an insane place. Now Darnold yeah. was gonna play, I think, this year. Yeah, any, like either I, yeah, way. True. But um yeah, we'll see. But and then we'll Penix. See. Hello. Everyone forgets about him. Um yeah. But yeah. Definitely uh lots of uh bright futures going around as far as the quarterback position in the NFL. But do you have anything else to say in um the National Football League? Not particularly. Um you know, I'm excited to see how the Bills work. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, like, I think it's going to be great. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's going to look too much differently. I think they're just going to... Um, yeah, it's going to be a good safety play. I mean, he's like a great veteran receiver for obviously Josh Allen with missing digs. I didn't really throw much of digs past couple of years, but yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I do want to touch um, on AP poll. Yeah, I was That's hoping to. Um, yeah. So I might even screen share this. Uh, College... Yeah basketball ap poll now this is one of my favorite times of the year um that and and march madness of course um but let's see i mean yeah obviously ku fell badly at the end of last year yeah Uh, how do i do this i saw like i forget obviously what account i posted it but it was like top comment was like ku's too high or like ku glaze or whatever (laughs) yeah i mean I'm gonna. I I I don't. I almost don't love being preseason number one. It's just like you're just immediately in the spotlight, and like only bad things can happen. But yeah, I mean, like if we win every game, like that's just expected. Yeah. Um, Damn. Plus, yeah, like but, a rise eighteen or rose eighteen. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you don't do good in the tournament, it's just kind of yeah. Like, um, I will say like this is the most, the second most stacked KU team I've seen. Um, was most when they won? No, it's the one with Devon Dotson and Yudoka Azabuke. That mm. was like, like they they were the the number one overall C going into the tournament, and then COVID. Yeah, that's right. That's the most stacked. Um, or maybe like the wing. There there have been some stacked ones, but like with the transfer portal, the fact that we were able to meet every single need. So like, Dewan Harris, top five point guard in the nation, probably. Best defensive point guard in the nation, best passing point guard in the nation. Um, then you've got AJ Store. I guess he'll probably play the three. Um, average sixteen in Wisconsin, like top top ten wing in the country. Uh, Zeke Mayo, the best player uh, that wasn't power five or like the best mid major player last year. Average like nineteen a game. Um, then I mean KJ Adams, who is insane. Mm-hmm. Hunter Dickinson, the preseason player of the year. Preseason player um, of the year. Yeah, which he doesn't deserve, by the yeah. way. It should be RJ Davis. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, Bama is stacked. Bama is stacked. Sears returning back. almost every Sears is back. Nelson is back. That's sick. Um, they've got a they've got a pretty good like recruiting slash transfer class. It's just like they're not quite as deep as KU is. I think. Yeah, like KU's 12 deep. Mm-hmm. Um UConn, I think they're too high. Like obviously they're gonna be good. Caravan, but like Caravan is their best player. Yeah. Um and like Liam McNeely. Like, I don't know. That roster just doesn't they don't frighten me too much. Like, let's yeah. do they have do they have rosters on here? No, they don't. Um they won. They they beat Rhode Island in like an exhibition game by a, a ton. But um, it's like you just big, can't like rank UConn too low until they actually are bad. Yeah, it's like that sort true. of deal. That's yeah. true. Um, I mean the Big Twelve looks insane. Houston returning LJ Cryer and Jawan Roberts, which is like pretty terrifying. Mm. Um, Iowa State Taman Lipsy, Flame and Taman. Um, both of these teams are crazy on defense. Yeah. Um. I don't know why the Big Twelve is like it's like an offensive league in football and defensive in in basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, Gonzaga. 
I don't even really like know what to like think about Gonzaga team. They were like so off the map last year. Yeah, really. But um, then like, and that's when they actually made a run. Yeah, like they people actually, stopped caring about them. Yeah. Um. And it was a bunch of like transfers and like guys I'd never really heard of before. I mean, I'd heard of them, but it wasn't like guys I was getting a lot of like preseason hype from. Yeah. And I guess they're returning a whole like heck of a lot of players. Yeah. Um, let me look like who was the guy Greg who we just said that like looked like the meanest person ever. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I he was killing Ben Greg. He was killing. Greg. Yeah. Um. What are your thoughts on Duke? Obviously, number one recruiting class. Um, I mean, I like them just because I know like a decent amount of the guys. But I mean, Cooper Flag, like from what I could tell, he seems like just absolutely the real deal. Like it seems insane. I mean, yeah. just watching like the um, what what's the like the team that played the Olympic team? Like what what were they called? You remember? Oh, the select team. Yeah, like the select team. Just like watching that, and like and the fact at- that he played on them on yeah, that team. He exactly, just looks he was very like, comfortable. He really does. Um, um so I think now, do the thing is I don't think he's gonna average like twenty a game. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Probably like I think I, I I don't I don't think that's his game. I think he's a ten to thirteen to fifteen point per game scorer with like three blocks and seven rebounds. He's like yeah. an all around kind of a guy, and they have Tyrese Proctor. Mm-hmm. Um. Caleb Foster, who I'm not super high on, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, I just don't I think his game's a little one dimensional. Mm. Um, but I mean, come on, Malu, I still don't know how to say his last name, but the big from South Sudan. Mm. Um, he's obviously very solid. Um, and then everybody's saying that Khan Knupel out of Wisconsin, this the sharpshooter, has been impressing everybody all offseason. Nice. Um so be on the lookout for him to uh, light it up a few games. All right. Um, Wait, can Elliot Cadeau shoot now for UNC? I mean, that's like – it's the Ben Simmons, like, effect. Like, you're always yeah. going to see videos of him, like, being able to shoot. And now, like, like – yeah. and, and, like, think about, like, the different the, – the difference in confidence in shooting between me at the rec and me in a high school game. Yeah. The, honestly, for anybody like, at the rec. Like I'll pull anything at the rec. And so like those videos, that's Elliot Cadeau at our at his equivalent of the rec mm. or like a scrimmage. And so like that's it's a it's a completely different environment. So we really can't base anything off that. Obviously, Hubert Davis is gonna say that he can shoot now. Yeah. Because at the end of last year, teams were sagging all the way to we watched <laughs> we them. saw it we in watched person. it happen. Teams were sagging all the way and he couldn't make the three pointer and it was yeah. blowing up the offense. Mm-hmm. Um, Baylor. Who did they get? They got somebody. Oh, they got Jeremy Roach. Right, that's who they got. Yeah. Um, they're gonna be dangerous. Um, but yeah, no. I, UNC stacked. They have a really tiny backcourt. Like Kiddo and and RJ Davis. Yeah. Um, is pretty small. No Baycott. Um, finally. Yeah, finally. Um, so we'll see. I don't know if they really have the depth. Yeah. But. Hmm. Uh, there's no reason to think that they don't, um, but it's just a bunch of unproven guys. Um, yeah. Arizona, I think this is a little high for them. Um, obviously, Caleb Love, fantastic. Um, the rest of the team, they're all right. I think they still have Kylan Boswell. Mm-hmm. Jane Bradley, who was really good last year. Um, Caleb Love. Oh, they got Trey Townsend from Oakland. I don't know oh, if his game yeah. transfers a whole lot. Wait, um, who did Arizona? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they got they have a five star Carter Bryant. Um, who's, I mean, he's pretty good. Nice. Um, they got Tobey Awaka from Tennessee, who we watched play in that March Madness game. But oh. I don't really think that team looks all that impressive. Um, yeah. Auburn, they have a really good recruiting class. I feel like Bruce Pearl's teams always light it up too. Um, yeah, they did last so, in the regular season, not in the tournament. I know that. Yeah. Um, but, hmm. Where? Oh yeah, and Aiden Holloway transferred away from Auburn to Alabama. He was like a four or five star from a couple years ago. Yeah, or like two years ago. Uh, Tennessee fell a lot. Um, yeah. I think they might still have Zakai Ziegler. 
Mm. Um, I really haven't. Um, but obviously with Rick Barnes, you know anything. That's all right. Anything's possible. A and M. They lost Vescovy. Is, is he still there? Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. No more. Right, we just do top fifteen. Stop at Creighton. Yeah. Oh, right. we just um meant real quick. Indiana huge transfer portal class. Marquette's yeah. way too. Marquette's way too high. They lost everything, and Shock is not a good coach. Um, Arkansas. Honestly, this is probably too low. I think they're going to be really good. As much as I hate them, um, and Rutgers. Everybody, watch out for Rutgers. Yeah. Um, top two recruits. Two huge freshmen. Uh, yeah. well, two, yeah, two of the top three. And then the only other thing I'll say, sleeper team is uh Mississippi State down here. They mm. had um, Kanye Clary. Well, they have Kanye Clary, but they also I, I always forget his name. Um, you remember the guy at the end of the March Madness game? I was just saying about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Diehard so, Mississippi State fan. Diehard Mississippi State fan. Um, and we were talking to him about this big time freshman that they've got. Um, and I he was insane last year. He almost won, uh, like freshman of the year in the SEC. And the only reason he didn't is because they he had to go against Robin Reed. Um, mm-hmm. why can't I? Did he trans? Oh, Josh Hubbard. Mm-hmm. Yep, Josh Hubbard. Uh, so on that note, um, if there's anything else you want to talk about. You know, maybe, I'm good. maybe Mary's Feast. Um, oh, yeah, we went but, to Mary's. Shout out oh, Mary's yeah. Kitchen. Yeah, shout out Mary's Kitchen. Um, we'll end on that note. Everybody loves James over there. Oh, Just yeah. Just like uh, everybody loves James on the Taste from the Lakes podcast. Oh, same uh, for uh, you. But, yeah, hey, good I, interview. I, I, you didn't have to tell me. Well, nah, I felt I'm morally bad. obligated to. But, um, um, anyways, yeah, good interview. Good good ball talking. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I hope you guys – that was – yeah, I really enjoyed that interview, honestly. Give yeah, good perspective on – Ocean Lakes, the future of Ocean Lakes basketball. And um, yeah, from a retired player here and a current player there. So yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening and watching. All right, and we'll peace. Catch you guys next time. See ya.